Shalom. Call Layla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Kakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, <clears throat> pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, we shall consider it in the latter days. What are we considering? The temptations that's going to come upon all the world. From the Greek, orchimene, or in the orchimene sense, which literally means all the inhabitants of the earth <clears throat> are getting ready to come on the temptation of the mandatory implementation of the sea hip. The United Nations just passed a decree that they want to link everyone to a central bank digital currency. And in order to successfully implement that, everyone is going to have to receive a radio frequency two-way communication device <coughs> to be implanted to create a puncture and an insertion. So I just saw this video by, I think it was Brother Dabar Kadash. I'm not gonna play the video, but I saw it post earlier, right here. The United Nations announced mandatory this digital ID link to bank accounts. And I'm gonna copy this brother's video and channel in the description box. <clears throat> that way I don't forget. Let's go ahead and go here first. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31. So Moses saw the destruction of America and he saw and was a part of being sold as a slave on a ship. Hence, he wrote Deuteronomy 28 and 68. So he saw these events, which means he was here. And I say here, reincarnated to return. See, let's read this first. <clears throat> Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Let's go to verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you so that buy so bond men slave men and bond women slave women and no man shall redeem you this is why Yahweh Shai says when he returns in Isaiah chapter 47 I will not meet thee as a man so he's coming back with all power, glory, signs, and wonders. Let's look at this word by. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 7069. Kana. Kana. See? Right here. Redeeming his people. The Israelites. <clears throat> redeeming his people. So Moses K. 
came over here with ships. Matter of fact, let's get this image here. I want to pull this up. Egyptian pyramid on the one dollar bill right here <clears throat> see you can't tell me the Bible is not a true book so America is that place that spiritual Sodom in Egypt when we read Revelation 11 and 8 <clears throat> Because it follows after some of the ancient rituals and worships of the ancient Egyptian gods. Along with the Babylonian gods, the Assyrian gods, Greek, Roman, Roman, so forth and so on. <clears throat> ancient Hermetic or Kemetic gods. See? With ships. <coughs> so he saw America... And he came over to America. Let's go up. Uh, see if I can remember where it's at. Right here. Deuteronomy 28 and 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shall thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So that king is Moses. <coughs> we'll go ahead and prove that. Let's go to... I think it's... Um, Deuteronomy 33. <clears throat> right here. Deuteronomy 33 and 4. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Yeshuan when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. So Moses came over with ships that he laid his or made his bed in hell. King David spoke about that. Though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. So reincarnation is all throughout the Bible. <coughs> So hell is a low condition, or literally the grave. And it can mean a low, austere condition or a predicament of torment. See? Let's go here. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 31. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 28. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you and evil will befall you in the latter days. Because ye will not, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. <coughs> so when you look at the CHIP or the Central Bank Digital Currencies device to help facilitate that transaction to be implanted in our hands, it is a miniaturized electronic idol. That's what it is, an idol. So to take that device 
when we read Revelation 13, verse 16 on down, and Revelation 14, somewhere around 8, 9, and 10, whoever take it is going to be consumed with fire. Let's read that. Let's go to Deuteronomy 29. So just like Moses warned in the old days, Deuteronomy 29, verse 23. Let's go to 22. So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they shall see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord have laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Atma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. In the latter days, this is also prophesied. According to Jeremiah 50. So we know that Jeremiah 50 and Jeremiah 51 is talking about the daughter of Babylon. Ancient Babylon was not destroyed by fire. Jeremiah 50, verse 40, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Behold, a people shall come from the north and a great nation and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. That's Mother Bear, Russia. <clears throat> See? So this is a Latter-day prophecy. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's go here. Wait a minute. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Where is it at? Jeremiah 50. <clears throat> okay, let's start reading Jeremiah 50, verse 27. One moment. <clears throat> Certain way it was worded. I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> let's put in Jeremiah 50. Verse 27, slay all her bullocks, let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for their day is come, the time of their visitation. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. So this is talking about a future prophecy, which is the daughter of Babylon. See, let's start down to verse 31. <clears throat> Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts, for thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee. See, the daughter of Babylon. <clears throat> So we go back here to Deuteronomy 29, verse 23. And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein. Like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Atma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger, and in his wrath, even all nations shall say, 
Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? So the, the Israelites, the generation that he spoke to, would be here in the latter days, going under great tribulation and being tempted by the mandatory implementation of the sea hit, which is a miniaturized idol. <laughs> See, Deuteronomy 29, verse 26. For they went and served other gods and worshiped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. So we know this is talking about right now. Let's jump down to Deuteronomy 29, verse 28. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. <laughs> so northern tribes, Israel, came over to Azareth, which means another land. And we have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that came over with ships as well. But during the North Atlantic slave trade, primarily, <clears throat> see, by the work of your hands, let's go to, um, let's go here first, Deuteronomy 4. Let's go to verse 20. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. So there is a remnant according to the election of grace that are a people now that are repenting. So being recognized by Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai now, and that are not going to give in to temptation. Let's see here. Let's read that again. But the Lord have taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. So he, the deliverance that he's going to do in the future is going to supersede the deliverance out of ancient Egypt. So spiritual Sodom and Egypt is going to melt with fervent heat. Hot, molten, liquid lava. America. See, let's go here. <clears throat> to... Um, Let's go to Deuteronomy 4, verse 30. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4. Let's go to 28. Deuteronomy 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor eat nor smell. So <laughs> this is talking about idolatry. And we know that the sea hip is a miniaturized idol. So it is also the work of men's hands. It is also an idol. See? So this is talking about the future. Let's read Deuteronomy 4, verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, 
which ye swear unto them. <clears throat> so those that reject the temptation in the latter days are going to be preserved. So we would have been as Sodom and Gomorrah had the Lord not left us a remnant, elect, <clears throat> which means we would have been destroyed with fire or literally destroyed, which leads to death, either or. Isaiah 1, verse 9, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. <clears throat> See? So the work of our hands, idolatry, trusting on spiritual Sodom and Egypt, which means trusting on their technology, their handouts, their central bank digital currencies. Let's put in Deuteronomy 31, verse 28. Moses is going to repeat himself. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you and evil will befall you in the latter days because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. See, so he's talking about right now in the latter days. Now, we know that the latter days start when Yahushai died on the cross. But there is a two and a half thousand year period, two and a half days. One day unto the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. So we're at the end of that two and a half day period, approximately 2,700 years. <clears throat> so the Sodom and Gomorrah effect <coughs> is going to come upon America. Go back to that Deuteronomy. Let's go over right here, 29 and 23. And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. So we can read about that where? In the latter days. Let's go to Revelation 14. <clears throat> Look at Revelation chapter 14. <clears throat> Remember that word wrath? In case you don't, it's right here in Deuteronomy 29 and 23. Now let's go back to Revelation 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Wrath. See? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, 
if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Do we not just read that here? Deuteronomy 29, let's go back to 22. So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they shall see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord have laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Atma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. So we're in that window, that time. We've got these strangers here. <clears throat> these strangers. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's age, 5237. Nochri. Nochri. All nations are going to see the destruction of Babylon to come as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. But the Lord is gathering his elect and is putting the spirit on the remnant to reject the sea hip. Let's go ahead ready to close this out here. Let's go here to... A moment. <clears throat> well, there was something that I missed. Okay, I know what it was. Let's go here. I think it's Luke 10 and 21. <clears throat> okay, I'll go ahead and do this. Makes it easier to find. <clears throat> um, right here. See, so this is the elect. Luke 10 and 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. Let's go to 19. Behold, I give, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So this is the remnant, the remnant that are not going to succumb to the temptations of the devil. See, let's go to Deuteronomy 29 and 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So the remnant is being protected. Names written in heaven. That's the elect. See, we covered it. 
We covered it. Yep. I think that was it. Let me make sure. <clears throat> yeah, no need to beat a dead horse. So, the Bible repeats itself. And as historians say, history repeats itself. And really, the mystery behind that is, is reincarnation. <laughs> Spirits are brought back. So, Moses saw the destruction of the daughter of Babylon. Let's get one more. Remember, we read about fire and brimstone as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. <clears throat> See, let's go here. Deuteronomy 32 and 22. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. There's more. Let's go here. Let's jump down. Deuteronomy 32, verse 40. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. So this is going to be the destruction of the last ruling empire, the daughter of Babylon, which Moses saw. <clears throat> I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye heavens, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And who saw this? And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea, the son of Nun. See? So Moses saw America, the daughter of Babylon. Something else I missed. <laughs> so that glittering sword, these nuclear missiles, Followed by the laser and chariot fire. I think that was it. Just like John on the island of Patmos saw this destruction. Habakkuk saw it. See? Starting with the nuclear destruction, followed by the laser and chariot fire. Now, the fact, let's go here first. Second Ezra 13, verse 18, go to 17. And they that were not left were in heaviness. Now understand I the things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. So these are the major judgments that's going to come upon the earth. Therefore, are they come into great peril and many necessities, like as these dreams declare. Yet is it easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world. Yet is it easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world and not to see the things that happen in the last days. And he answered unto me, and he said, The interpretation of the vision shall I show thee 
and I will open unto thee the thing that thou hast required. See? So these major judgments, this cataclysmic event of destruction is going to come upon the earth. And the primary crosshair is America. <clears throat> Let's go to Second Ezra 14, verse 22. Second Ezra 14 and 21. For thy law is burnt. Therefore no man knoweth the things that are done of thee or the work that shall begin. But if I have found grace before thee, send thy Holy Spirit unto me, and I shall write all that have been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which will live in the latter days may live. So live, keep his command. <laughs> Keep his commandments and live. Keep the testimonies and the faith in Yahweh. How do we know that? Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience. Let's go to 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. That's the sea hip. <coughs> this image of the beast is this system modeled after the Greco-Roman Empire, which absorbed the traditions of Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. Verse 12, here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yahawashai. See? So the prophet saw this destruction. There's one more. <clears throat> Habakkuk 3. See? So the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. And the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. Major nuclear destruction and fire, followed by the laser, followed by the laser and chariot fire from the so-called UFOs. <clears throat> See, let's go here. To Habakkuk 3, verse 4. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was a hiding of his power. So laser fire is going to be coming out of these vessels. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. So this is going to be a scary time. Habakkuk saw it. Let's go to <clears throat> oh, it's one scripture that I want to get here. Right here. Habakkuk 3. <clears throat> Wait a minute. What about that glittering spear? Let's read verse 11. We read that. Moses saw it. So did Habakkuk. Habakkuk 3 and 11. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and all the shining of thy glittering spear. And the heathen are going to see this destruction. See, verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. So he's going to be the hope of his people, elect. <laughs> See, verse 13, thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. 
Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. So he is the hope of his people, the salvation of the Lord's elect. <clears throat> so that glittering spear. So Habakkuk saw this vision. Ezra saw this vision. Moses saw this vision. See, Joel 3, verse 16. Let's go to 15. Same thing Habakkuk said. And Joel, he, he saw it too. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Habakkuk said the same thing. So that salvation is to the Lord's elect of Israel. <clears throat> See, I'm going to show you what Ezra saw. <clears throat> Moses saw this as well. Let's see here. I think it's somewhere around right here. Second Ezra 16, verse 15. Let's go to 14. Behold, the behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Plagues of catastrophic fire and radiation, wormwood. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evil. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Ezra saw this. Moses saw this. Joel saw this. Habakkuk saw this. Let's go into that wormwood. <clears throat> I think it was in, read it in Deuteronomy. 29. Let's Deuteronomy 29, verse 18. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. So that gets into corruption, bitterness. But the earth is going to be contaminated by wormwood as well. Radiation. We're not going to beat a dead horse. <clears throat> See, let's step back down to verse 22. So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Atma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? See? So this is a 
circling back around of the events that was prophesied from the days of old. And the Lord is going to keep his word that were in all the curses, plagues, and or promises that were written in, in this book. And I will copy and paste this video in the description box. I recommend you watch it. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Call me your Shirella and the Bob the Ball. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.